grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In last week's gospel, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. This week, he says, I am the true vine. Last week, we were the sheep. This week, we're the branches. And the Father is the vine dresser. The vine dresser is out looking for fruit on the branches. That's us. And if he finds none, he takes it away, the text tells us. I don't really like the sound of that. And if he does find fruit, then he prunes it. It doesn't sound much better. Either way, it sounds like there's a whole lot of cutting going on around that vineyard. The vine dresser is looking for fruit. And so there's incentive for us to produce fruit. <clears throat> incentive, but not ability. The alternative, though, is not very pretty. At the end of the gospel, we find that the fruitless branches are thrown into the fire. So I guess the question that we're led to ask ourselves is, are we the branches producing the fruit for which God, the vine dresser, is looking? It seems to me that's the important question in the text here. And if you're feeling a bit uneasy, because you've looked through your life and you thought, oh gosh, you know, some good fruit there, a little bit weak on this part, a little bit withered fruit here, all in all, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you're feeling uneasy, it's by design. Because this is the law at work at its finest. The law is meant to make you feel uneasy. It's meant to show you yourself in the light of God's perfection. And as we look at the law in the light of God's perfection, we shouldn't feel good about ourselves. If you do, better have a look at that. Because you don't, you don't measure up to the perfection of God, nor do I. Do you feel that the words of the gospel in this text are a bit accusatory in tone? Because that's the way I see it. God the Father of the vine dresser is looking for fruit. All right, Pastor Brown, let's see your fruit. <laughs> accusatory. I recognize it. I see it all the time. It's inside of me. I get accused when I'm driving down the road, going the speed limit or under, and I see a police car. <laughs> because I know, in my heart of hearts, I'm a speeder. <laughs> I like to speed because I'm always late. <laughs> but even if I'm not, I feel accused. Because there's the law right there. That's what the law does. It causes us to force us to look at ourselves and to see really what we are. Speeder. Anybody else want to admit this? Did you take notes? We got some police in here. What if I don't have fruit? What if the fruit is pitiful, of poor quality? What if it's just not good enough for the vine dresser? What if I don't just measure up to what he's looking for? If there's an undertone of that for you in this story, then you are listening correctly. Jesus doesn't want you to walk away from this thinking, hey, I'm okay, all my fruit's good enough. It's perfect. I've got it all together. He wants you to hear that the vine dresser is expecting you to produce much fruit. He does not tell you what kind of fruit. He does not tell you the quality of the fruit. He just looks for much fruit. That leaves a lot of questions. Now, 
if you are at all honest with yourselves, you know that what fruit you are capable of producing isn't going to be much. As I look at this passage, I see that the production of fruit is not the work of the branches at all. You and I, the branches, do not work to produce the fruit. What our job is, Jesus says, is to abide. Did you catch that in the readings? He didn't say go out and produce fruit. He said abide in me. It simply means to stay connected, not to disconnect. Because you're already connected. Abide. Stay right where you are. Keep doing exactly what you're doing where you're getting the, the sap of the vine. The vine produces and provides what the branches need to produce the fruit. Not the branches. You don't have to do that. The vine dresser goes about making the, the fruit the best it can be. That's why he he's the one that goes around snipping it and Whatever it is that vine dressers do. <laughs> you know, like <clears throat> last week's gospel, the metaphor of the shepherd and the sheep. In this week's gospel, we are also, as in that particular passage, we are passive. We don't till, we don't water, we don't tend the vine, we don't produce the nourishment to grow fruit. These are the jobs of the vine dresser and the vine. Our very simple part is to abide. That's what he tells us. Stay put. Remain connected to the vine. The branches have no other alternative but to receive the vine from the vine or to wither up and die. Jesus came for the purpose to connect us again to the nourishing vine of life that we had lost due to the fall into sin. He did this first by dying to pay for our sin, then rising to new life, guaranteeing our resurrection on the last day. Secondly, he has instituted his church on earth in which he, to quote Luther, daily and richly forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. This is what we're confessing in the third article of the Creed. Those of you who are in confirmation, listen up. We'll be on the exam. And I believe that in the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, and the forgiveness of sins <coughs> here in this place, the Holy Spirit is involved in bringing about that forgiveness, that life-giving sap that produces the fruit for those who will abide. Abide in what? Just what the third article talks about. Stay connected to the Word. The church here in this place produces the Word for you and the sacrament. Here is where the Holy Spirit is at work in His, in His means of grace to grow in you the thing that He's looking for. It is He who works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. He is at work in you, making what He wants out of you. Here in the church, he has given us word and sacrament. These are the nourishment for our souls. Through these also the vine dresser prunes us and produces in us the fruit that he's looking for. Your job, what God wants you to do, your part in the salvation story, abide. Keep coming to receive his word. Keep coming to receive his body and his blood. Remember his baptism for you, where you were called his child. Stay connected to the word and the sacraments. 
Stay connected to His church. Stay connected. Abide <coughs> in Him. And He will make of you all that is necessary. It's in His hands. Just abide. Amen. Okay.